Researchers who study liver disease and hippopotamus should count themselves fortunate. They never run low on RNA for their gene expression studies. But what about those who work on microdissected mouse tumor samples, even single cells? Or who work on limited cell sorted fractions? Or folks like Andre from the Barretos Cancer Hospital who shared the following concern. I'm studying a mutation in a specific gene that's being transcribed at extremely low levels in human cells. What can I do to improve the sensitivity of my real-time assay? Andre, I may have your answer. Before we talk about possible solutions, let's mention two big complications with the scenarios we just mentioned. First, concern about loss of RNA when starting with a small cell population. If one uses traditional isolation and cleanup methods, such as those requiring either column purification or nucleic acid precipitation, there's a risk that the limited sample will get lost. Now, one can add a carrier molecule, such as tRNA, but even this approach won't guarantee recovery. So what's a good alternative? Well, one excellent option for either cultured cells or microdissected samples is to use a direct lysis approach. The idea is to lyse cells for five minutes, releasing the RNA into solution, to perform a two-minute stop reaction, then to add the lysis directly to a reverse transcription reaction, such that no RNA is lost. Finally, the resulting cDNA goes directly into a real-time reaction. But what if saving all the RNA still doesn't provide sufficient template to get good real-time signal, due either to limited starting amounts or to a minimally expressed target gene? For those cases, a pre-amplification step can be enormously useful. Here's the idea. Following the RT step, we can pre-amplify our targets of interest using primers specific to the targets we wish to interrogate downstream. We do this by creating a pool of primers, up to 100 pairs in all, that pre-amplify the cDNA using a specialized real-time PCR master mix for anywhere between 10 to 14 cycles. This limited number of cycles ensures that we maintain the stoichiometry among our various targets, critical for researchers needing quantitative information on their genes. At the same time, we wind up with plenty of cDNA to perform a dilution as well as to carry out numerous real-time PCR reactions. And not surprisingly, Life Technologies provides isolation kits, amplification reagents, and even transcript-specific assays for every step of the process. If you'd like more information, please go to lifetechnologies.com and search for Cells to CT. You'll find an abundance of kit options, including kits for TACMAN and Cyber Chemistries, for either using or not using preamplification, for looking at mRNA or microRNAs, and more.